listen, listening to the human rights case, like when Alex Gladstein okay. was talking about somebody mm -hmm. who was, I believe she was leaving Afghanistan and mm -hmm. she was escaping the country and had, you know, her, you know, all the stuff that she was physically carrying with her, which she got robbed. Uh, mm -hmm. But she had her, her private keys up here and she had them in her clothes and she was able to start a new life again with, you know, uh, with Bitcoin. You can't do mm -hmm. that with her local currency. Nobody wanted that where she was going. She, nobody wanted, you know, shitcoin number 642,000, you know, they wanted Bitcoin. And so that really opened up my eyes to like, oh, okay. So she can go anywhere in the, the world, you know, pretty much and start her life again. And I, I just, it didn't even, I didn't realize how uninclusive our monetary system is. Absolutely. You know, I just it thought like, oh, everyone's got bank accounts and everyone's got this and everyone's got access to whatever. And then st I started realizing like, wow, there are so many people who don't have opportunities because they don't have the ability to transact fairly. They're obviously they're, um, you know, when I, the other part too, was I remember seeing a headline in this was, a, you know, a couple of years ago and it was like, you know, 40% of our entire money supply was printed in the last 18 months during COVID. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that can't be good. Like, mm -hmm. that sounds like my purchasing power just got robbed. Um, and so did everybody's, so, you know, whoever's holding dollars. And so that was another aha moment to me too. Cause I recognized like, I know how that goes. If you've got too much money and you're still holding the same thing, you're not, your, your purchasing power just went way down and that's robbery. That's theft. And mm -hmm. I recognized like, Oh, if we're going to keep playing this system over here, people are going to continue to get robbed and so what's the way out? And so the the finite supply of Bitcoin, you know, was a huge, like, oh, wow, this is great. So you can't ever just go inflate this money supply and take away people's purchasing power. I liked that. I also loved that, you know, separating the the decision making from a human being to, to be able to go do that, to just here's the code and here's how this this works. Every 10 minutes we get a new Bitcoin. Okay. That's predictable. I like that, you know, and nobody can go in and tamper with it. And if you want to go change the code and, you know, hard for it, go ahead. It doesn't seem to have worked so far. Uh, mm -hmm. if people want to opt in. And I like that it's an opt in. Nobody has to use it. If you want to participate in the network, great. If you don't, you don't have to. It's peaceful. There's no Absolutely. guns to your head that say you must accept Bitcoin or transact. So that to me is, it's a peaceful money. 